Hey designers, welcome back to my online store build series where I'm walking you through the full process of me building out my new store using Webflow e-commerce. If you missed the first two videos in the series, then they'll be linked on a card in the description. Uh, in those, I gave you an introduction to Webflow e-commerce and also took you through the build of my product page, this page right here. Um, today, in this video, I'm going to be taking you through building out the category page. So that's a page that shows like all screen prints, all map prints, etc. And also the storefront. So this would be like the home page for my store. There'll be a lot of building, a lot of connecting things to CMS fields, um, a few fun interactions I'm planning as well. Should be good. So let's not waste any more time talking about it and just dive in and get started doing it. So just to refresh it, this right here is the design for my category page. Basically, it's going to have um, filters almost to click through each individual category. And if you notice, these cards here where I've displayed a print look pretty similar to the cards that I built out in the last video for displaying in this more print section. So we're going to be able to make use of some copy and paste there to make that faster. Uh, and then this is the storefront page that I'll be building. This side bit here is fixed and then um, the prints will scroll at the side and it's this overlay that I've got some fun interactions planned for. So let's get into it. In the last video, we're working with the products template. In this one, we're gonna start with the categories template, which again is just a blank page when you dive into it. Because I save my navigation on the product page as a symbol, it's pretty easy for me to just add it into this page, so there's no need for me to go and build that out again. Next, let's tackle this bit here with the prints and the switches. To get these little category buttons in, I'm actually going to insert a collection list that pulls in the names of each of the categories because that way, if I add any categories in future, it'll automatically add itself to this page. There won't be any need for me to do it manually. Well, hello there, it's voiceover Charlie back again to tell you what I'm actually doing here. Uh, in this bit, I'm just adding a collections list and connecting it to the categories collection, then styling it using the classes that I've already got set up for these pill shaped tag buttons. I want these little buttons to match the same color as their category, so I'm gonna get the text color from the color field and also get the border color from the color field. Here I'm setting all these tags to have an inline block display so that they all sit on one line, then adding a gray opacity hover for the current category and also for the hover state. Now we'll add another collection list, um, this time connecting it to products. And what I'll do is in the filter, I'll limit it to only ones where the main category equals the current category, meaning it's only going to show the ones uh, that relate to the category of the page we're on. And like I talked about on the start, I can come onto this product page. I'm going to select the div that contains all of this stuff on this product card, which is called product card. I'm going to just go command C to copy it, then paste it into here. Boom, just need to do something with the width. So I've just noticed that I connected the wrong thing when I did this list. Um, instead of doing the main category, I need to do categories, contains current category. That's it. That way my prints will still show up if they have multiple categories on the page, my bad. All right, so we need to make sure that these wrap around each other. And if I change this to center, then see if the whole row is not filled, it'll sit in the middle, which I think just looks a lot nicer. And because I copy and pasted, my interaction that I showed you um, that I was making in the last video where my prints pop up on hover, that's come along too. The last thing really that this page needs before we go and check all the different device sizes is the footer, obviously. So for that, I'm gonna come back to the products template. And again, I'm gonna copy and paste this. Seems to be working. Okay, let's see. Here I'm just going through and editing the width of these product cards for the smaller screen sizes just so they sit a bit nicer in the space. Mm -hmm. 
And at this stage, I also noticed that I forgot to make my menu responsive when I was going through and making the product page. So just quickly fixing that. So that's the category page done. Let's move on to our storefront. Um, I'm just gonna click here to create a new page and just call it store. This one is gonna be built in a bit of a different way to, to the rest because um, we don't have that top navigation like we do the other pages. This is basically two blocks. There's this purple side block and then the gray on the other side. I'm gonna start with this sidebar and I think I'll make this take up like a third of the screen. So it doesn't matter if your browser is wider or smaller, this is gonna be um, a third of the screen. So let's, let's get started adding that in. Typing in 100 VH for the height means 100% of the view height. So that means that um, it'll always be the same height as your browser window is. So if that shrinks, then this div will shrink as well. And let's make this fixed. Here I'm going through and adding some padding to this inner container that sits inside my purple box, which will hold all my content. And I'm adding a max width to it of 330 pixels because even though the purple sidebar is set to be a third of the width of the screen size, no matter how wide your screen is, I wanna make sure that the content inside my container doesn't go too wide. So setting a max width on it means it'll never get wider than that 330 pixels. Here I'm adding the content into this container here, like my footer links and styling them so they match my design. And then I'm trying to get all this content to sit in the right place. Basically I want uh, the logo and that upper block of copy to stick to the top and the footer links to stick to the bottom. So I'm playing around with Flexbox settings to try and figure that out and get them to stick to either side of the box. Just like I did on the categories page, I'm gonna make this list of categories here by adding a collection list in. I want this collection list of categories to stick to the top as well. So I'm adding that into my um, div that's sticking to the top there. And then I am borrowing styling from other pages on my site. So I've used this styling on my blog. So I can just go and copy and paste that to see what classes I use to get the divider line and to get the, the type styled like I wanted. And now that's all gonna match. In order to get this um, scrolling prints thing working at the side, I'm gonna add columns to the body, just because if I add things straight into the body here, it's basically gonna have this fixed sidebar overlapping it because that is in a fixed position. Um, so if I add these columns in and I just put all my things in the second column, um, this one will stay empty and I shouldn't have any problems with that. Let's see. I'm adding another collection list into this right hand column here and in this one I'm going to fetch everything from the products collection. So this is going to display all of my prints. Add an image and I'm going to get the image from my product field, the main one. Styling my images, I set a 50% width on them so that they'd sit in two columns, adding margin and also adding a shadow to them. And then changing the way they're arranged because I decided it was more aesthetically pleasing to have the antler print up the top. You can see how that fixed sidebar is working now that my prints are in. See, as I scroll on the page, this is the only bit that moves. Um, I want that to stay to the left though, I think. Another tricky part is adding in this overlay functionality I want it to have. So let's just call this overlay. I'm going to make it fetch the background color from the that color category. Then let's just fade the opacity of it a bit. Obviously it's not working on this one. It's going a little bit over the print. So I need to sort that out. There we go, that was a problem. Knew it was something to do with like positioning or flexbox, but it was the fact that I had it set to stretch on the container. So obviously it was stretching everything up. Duh. So basically what I've done here is created a div that has this colored background and it's also got all of the hover content inside it.
Okay, so all of the details are in here. Um, actually, did I link this up yet? I did not. There we go. Okay, all of the stuff is there. Now I've got to work with it to create the interaction. So I'm going to set the interaction on the print container and say that whenever you hover over it, we're going to start an animation and start putting this thing together. So there's a few moving pieces here that I want to do. I want the color to kind of emerge from the bottom and fill the image. And then I want uh, all this white text and, and the information on here to like fade in. So let's start with, um, we'll do size for that one. Change the target. And here I'm essentially setting the start point and the end point of this animation that I want to have happen with the color block. And then the interaction is going to just automatically animate between them. Let's test that. That's looking cool. Okay, next up, um, we'll do opacity for this one. Then I'm doing the same thing, but for all of the text content that's inside the hover, setting that as a start point of zero opacity and an end point of 100, but something isn't quite working right. I know what I did wrong there. I need to add, um, because hover overlay is the class on both of these, I need to add something different to, yeah, to this one. Make it target that instead. Cool, that's working, but just like when I did the interaction with my prints, I need to set an interaction that happens when I stop hovering on it as well, otherwise they're just gonna stay there. So just like I did with the prints, I'm adding a uh, hover out action so that basically it reverses exactly what I did. It's the same things just in reverse. Cool, that's working pretty nicely. Makes it just a bit fun to like, you know, scroll around this page and, and check out the prints. The last thing I need to add, um, kind of important, is the cart so that if people click to purchase one, they can actually see it when they're on the store homepage. For that, I'm going to come into my symbol and copy these elements. So I'm pasting that cart and the menu button into this page and then changing the settings so it sits where I want it to, which is in the top right hand corner with a little bit of margin above it. I also had to swap out the menu icon for a dark one because this is on a light background. This one's obviously gonna be a little bit trickier on the responsive sizes because of this fixed sidebar. I'm gonna have to do something different, um, but that's okay. Let's see how they're looking. For this tablet viewpoint, I'm gonna keep the sidebar because I think it works. It's a little bit tight, but I, I think it'll be okay. So I'm just kind of shrinking some text to make it feel all right. That'll do, it's a little bit tight, but um, I'm okay with it. So speaking of tablet sizes, I do need to make sure that I set that same animation to happen um, when you click on an image as well as just hover over it because we want people to still be able to access all the details if they're on a touch device. So there we go, I've set that same animation. Um, because it's saved as an animation, I don't have to go in and create it again. But I've set it to animate in when you click as well as when you hover. So that should be the bases covered. Here's where things get really messy. This sidebar definitely doesn't work on a landscape phone screen size. So instead what I've decided to do here is take the thing off its fixed status, just have it be a block of purple sitting up the top with all of that intro content in it. To save some vertical space, putting the category tags in two columns instead of all in one row, and then uh, the cart in the middle. And uh, on mobile, definitely having these print images go 100% width because they look far too small when they're only 50%. All right, so that's our build. This is gonna be my storefront. Um, it's a page with the scrolling prints. And then if you hover over them, you see the category color come up on top. I think that's a pretty cool interaction. And um, you can click on these to go through to the category page as well. Um, and on here, you can swap between the different categories as you like, and you'll see all of the stuff that I have available. Really happy with how this turned out, especially love the storefront page. I think that's 
I don't know, I think it's pretty cool. I love the interaction on it and I think it's pretty unique as well. Like it's perhaps not something I would have been able to do if I was just using a template. Coming up next in the next video, we're gonna be working on a very important part of the whole online store thing. And that is the cart. How will people know what they're buying from you if they don't have a shopping cart? I'll be taking you through the build of that, show you how that all works in Webflow e-commerce. So stay tuned for that and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you want to get into Webflow, start trying it out, either building a store for yourself or for a client, then there'll be a link on the screen and also in the description. Maybe you can check it out and follow along with me as we build our cart next time. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.